Foundations of Mathematics for Elementary Teachers. An in-service program designed to provide background for the improvement of instruction in mathematics in the elementary school. Prepared by E. Glenadine Gibb and Augustus Scherer, members of the Department of Mathematics at State College of Iowa in Cedar Falls. Your instructor, Glenadine Gibb. Today, we will talk about a way of developing a system of numeration, a way we use to name numbers. What are some of the characteristics of the system we use? Can you list some of them? For example, how do you record how many things you see here? For many of us, the names of numbers, zero through nine, were only symbols to be memorized, each associated with a set. In fact, as young children, we learned to associate with each of many, many things a word, an apple, a box, and then later we learned to recognize a written symbol for that word and that word. And then, still later, we learn to write those symbols. By considering sets of objects such as we have here, we developed an understanding of a natural number. We abstracted a property common to these sets and all sets that are equivalent to them. We named this number three. And the symbols, a word, a numeral. A property common to these sets and all sets that could be put into one-to-one -one correspondence with any given one of these, we called eight. And the symbols, a word and a numeral. How did we name the number that we might associate with a set such as we have here? and all other sets that would have just as many members as that has. Do we invent a new name, new words, and numerals? For instance, might we call this netin, and then use the numeral and the word symbol? How long do we go on inventing new names, words and symbols to name numbers? How have other systems developed ways of naming numbers? Let's roll back time a good many, many thousand years ago to the early Egyptians. They approached the problem by using symbols for numbers that we know as 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and so on. And then for a set of objects such as we have here, they would record the number by writing a symbol for this group, for each of the tens that they had, and a symbol for each of the single objects. On the other hand, the Romans developed a set of numerals, uh, symbols for what we know as 1, 5, 10, 50, 100, 500, and so on. Their numeral for the number, the same number of objects, would be written C, L, X, V, I, I. Using our Hindu-Arabic system, we know that we would record the name of this number as 167. Here we see three numeration systems being used all to name the same number. 
We could consider numeration systems of other civilizations, and if we did, we would find that for each, they used a set of symbols, and then they had a plan of using those symbols to record the names of numbers. Our numeration system is so familiar to us that it's sometimes difficult to keep in mind all the characteristics of it. Suppose that we think about it as we think about how we would represent the number of objects that we see here. We use the base 10. In other words, for our collection, we group by 10. And as we put these in groups of 10s, we see that we have one 10 and some single objects. Grouping by 10s then means that all we need are 10 basic symbols, one through nine, and then a symbol for the empty set. To record what we have here, we first start by recording in this position a counter for each of the single objects. And then we record in this position using a counter for each of the groups of 10. Our numeral for this number then is 1, 4, base 10. Of course, we also know that another name we give for this symbol is 14. To check this understanding, uh, let's uh, keep the idea of place value. But this time, suppose that we group by sixes. In other words, we will use a base six. This means then that we will put a collection, which is equivalent to the one that we just saw, into groups of sixes. And we see here that we have two groups of sixes and two single objects. Now let's record again. For the single objects, and for the groups of sixes in this position. This helps us to think about the numeral using base six, which would be two, two, base six. Take another set equivalent to these that we've just seen. And this time, let's group by using base three. So we put these in groups of three. Recall that when we do this, that really all the symbols we need then are zero, one, two. Now we see here that we also have three groups of this size. We can group again. And now we have one group, three squared, or nine, one, three, and two single objects. Let's tally that on our abacus here. One counter for each of the ones, one counter in this position for the group of three, and one counter for the three squared. What would be the numeral? We see here that we have one, one, two, base three. Let's group once again. Still a group equivalent to all the others. And this time, let's have our base be two. Putting in groups of two, we also at the same time realize that all we need are really two symbols, zero and one. Now looking again, for each pair that we have, we can group again. Now, we have another pair, the same size. We can group once again. We have no single units, one group of two, one group of two squared, and one group of two cubed. Let's record that. We'll leave this empty for the one, two, for this collection, the two squared, and for this, 
the two cubed. Our numeral would then be one, 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 zero, base two. Perhaps grouping by twos may seem a little bit confusing, but let's think for a minute. Isn't that what we do when we use the 10 system? In other words, 10 ones, one group of 10, 10 tens, one group of 100, 10 100s, one group of 1,000. Think about a set of dots. Think about just a single dot, such as you may see here. We could represent this by a counter in this position. Now think about a group of 10 dots, such as we have here. We could represent that by moving one space over. Now think about 10 of these. As we see, 10 tens, or 100, and represented by coming over one other space, 100. Now think about 10 of these, 10 100s. And as we see these, we have then 10 groups of 100. To record this, one space over again, 1,000. Thus far, we have been thinking about a system we use, a plan we have for using numerals to name numbers. Let's think about the words. And as we do this, let's change not only our way of grouping, but also the symbols we use and the word names that we use. This means that we need to assign then to model sets new numerals, and new names. For a representation here of the empty set, let's call that um. And the numeral, for a singleton set, set with one member, let's call that phi. And the numeral, for this model set, and all other sets equivalent to that, let's call that phi, and the numeral. For this, let's call that fo and the numeral. Let's use this as our base, our way of grouping. Now, if we do that, we can, in this system then, we'll need only these numerals that we see here. Fi, fi, fo, uh, um, fi, fi, fo. We use a pair of numerals, much as we do for the tens, in which this represents the number of what we will call thumbs, and the number here of fees. With those as our basic names and numerals, let's see how we could develop a system in that using those. This chart may help us here as we see, first again, those basic sets we have, our model sets, the names we associated with those, and the numerals. Here, our base, the name thumb, and again, the way the numeral for that, showing phi fun, thumb in this position, and um phi. We add another object. How do we name this? And we see that we have here thumb and fee. We might think of calling that thumb fee. But let's pause for a moment. Think about our decimal system. 13, 14, 15. Don't you hear those one names first? So let's try to seek out the same pattern in this system. And so we will call it FIFM. Yet our numerals for the number of thumbs and the number of fees. Here we have, again, another element added, brought to the set here. And we have thumb. And here we have phi more. Yes, the name FIFM. And the numeral, again, the number of thumbs 
the number of fees. Put another unit in, and in this set we see FUM and four more, FUFUM, and the numeral. What happens here? We see now that we have five FUMs, much as we might have two tens. We might call this two tens, although again, looking back at our pattern, 10, 20, 30. And following a pattern such as that, let's call this FIFI. The number of thumbs, the number of fees. Put another unit. And we have now FI, uh, thumbs, and fee. FIFI fee, and the numeral. And still we can continue on down with another element added here. We have phi thumbs and phi or phi phi phi. And the numeral, the number of thumbs, the number of fees. We could continue on this way. What would happen when we had what we would call four of these units, such as we have the two here? much as we have 10 tens. We would invent a new name here, and for this system, let's call it fun, just like we say call a uh, hundred. Although I guess we should say we would call it fee fun, just like we talk about 100. Comparing the two charts, we are all familiar with a decimal chart or hundreds chart. And I think we can begin to envision what a fun chart might look like. We see some similarities in these charts. In the first row across in each one of them, we see the basic symbols that we use and also the symbol for our way of grouping. Thumb in this case, 10 in this. Here we see multiples of that group as we count down, a fum, fifi, fofi, and finally to fee fun, or 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and on down to 100. Of course, as we study the charts, we can see other similarities in terms of patterns that we use, not only in the numerals, but also in the words that we use. Thus far, we have been considering what we might call standard names for numbers. Names that might well be represented by using place value. Such as we, uh, some of these might be, as you see here, uh, for the 125, the numeral 1, 2, 5. Or, for the number 3,493, 3,493. Three. For 62, 6, 2. In the classroom, we do help boys and girls to develop understanding of how they may name numbers using these standard names, which puts emphasis on place value. There are many kinds of objects and devices that we can use. For instance, we use collections of sticks or things that we can group together, such as we have here. We see that it's much easier to recognize the number of a set if we have grouped these in tens, as we see two tens, three ones. Sometimes we use other devices, such as we might have here in a tens block, which helps us then to think of the one group of ten, in contrast comparison to the single units that we have. We can record the numbers here by using our abacus, in other words, to record the number of ones that we might see right here. We can then push down three counters, and if we would want to record on this the two tens we had, we could record in this position. Our hundreds chart also helps us, again, to get at a pattern of the way that we name numbers. Again, we can start across. However, we could start by putting our basic numerals down 
and this side. We can again identify four, five being between 40 and 50. 67 being between 60 and 70 are located here. An extended abacus helps us in learning to read larger numbers. For instance, the ones, tens, one hundreds. Or to the next group of the thousands, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. Or going on to the next group of the millions, millions, ten millions, hundred millions, and so on as far as we might want to go. Making use of a computer also gives us some help as we look about place value. For instance, suppose that I press down the five and I record that on the dial. Now what happens if I come back again and move this one place over? And doing that, I record again. I see not five now, but 50. Or if we move over one place again, we record, and pushing down the five, not five, 50, but this time, 500. Children using all these devices we may have come to realize that really, using only the 10 symbols, zero through nine, will help them to, they can name any number, no matter how great that number. Standard names of numbers are not the only considerations that we would like to give to talking about a system of numeration. Another feature which is helpful to us is that of the additive idea. Suppose we think about this. If we have, say, <coughs> a number expressed using the numeral 3, 6, 5, yes? three hundreds, six tens, five ones, or even thinking thirty-six tens, five ones. We also can write this thinking of three hundred plus sixty plus five. Suppose that we would consider another two thousand 389, in which we write again 2,000 plus 300 plus 80 plus 9. This kind of notation is helpful as we think about, as, uh, think about ways of making certain kinds of computations. Another feature is that of the multiplicative idea. For instance, the idea of expressing these uh, numeral using multiplication. Let's return again to the three, six, five. And what can we say here? We would have, writing this, we can think of this not as 300 now, but as three times 100 plus 6 times 10 plus 5 times 1. The number of 100s, the number of 10s, the number of 1s. This, these can also be expressed using exponents. And we again could express this num uh, 365 using exponents, which would appear something like this. 365 is equal to 3 times 10 to the second power plus 6 times 10 to the first power plus 5 times 
a 10, yes, 10 to the zero power, which we define as one. This again, the powers of 10, 10 to the zero power, 10 to the first power, 10 to the second power. You recall that we saw these powers as we grouped by threes, also as we grouped by twos. The use of exponents can help us in another kind of notation, one in which we can get just a glimpse of as we think about scientific notation. For instance, look at this numeral. It names the number 300 million. But how can we express this using scientific notation? We would write three times 10 to the eighth power, or same as the zero power, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Three hundred million. What about this one? How would you write that one? We have here two times 10 to what power? Yes, 10 to the fifth power. This kind of notation is useful in representing both large numbers, and later we'll see that it's useful in representing small numbers. We might well go back now to that set of objects that we saw in the beginning. How do we represent, how do we record the name of that set? As we see it again, we use our basic way of grouping, grouping by tens and our single units. Our numeral, two, seven. And so we conclude our discussion of a system of numeration. This Hindu-Arabic system, which we have inherited, is a place value system, a system which has chosen the symbols zero through nine. Sometimes these symbols are called digits. The next number, 10, is a very special role, plays a very special role in this system. It is called the base of our numeration system. To write each number greater than 10, and in fact, 10 itself, we use two or more digits and the principle of place value. We see that we need only 10 digits, zero through nine, to name any whole number, no matter how great it is. Foundations of Mathematics for Elementary Teachers has been presented by the State College of Iowa under a grant from the National Science Foundation and prepared by E. Glenadine Gibb and Augusta Schur. The program was produced and directed by Robert Gabler and recorded at KTPS in Des Moines, Iowa.